Welcome back everybody. This is the 22nd video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Our focus has been on the move class and uh, particularly the behavior of executing a move which uh, as we've shown here um, you know will create and return a new board um, based on executing a move on a piece for an incoming inbound board, right? The board that is referred to by the move. Um, and in the last video, I mentioned that we have a lot to do. Uh, you know, we still we have a to-do here for uh, hash code and equals on uh, the piece. We're also going to have uh, hash code and equals on move as you know when we calculate legal moves we have we return a collection of legal moves so we're gonna need anytime you want to do that you 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 know you're um, you're encouraged for correctness sake to uh, override the hash code and equals method uh, so we will be doing that I don't know if we're gonna have time to do all of that in this video but there is one thing that I absolutely want to cover which is that in executing, when executing a move, we haven't actually placed the moving piece, right? So here, this is the, um, this comment block here is indicating that we want to do the set piece. This is going to do the, this is going to move the actual piece that's moving. Everything else, all of the other parts of this method, are just sort of um, setting the other pieces in their place on the new board, right? So here we say go through all of the current players' pieces. If the piece that you're visiting is not the moved piece, it's not the piece that's moving, then just place it on the board. Uh, same for the enemy pieces, and then set the move maker to the next guy, right? So I move, and then now the the, the move maker is the other person, the if I'm white, then now the move maker is going to be set to black. That's why it's this dot board dot current player dot get opponent alliance, right? And then build the board. So how are we going to implement uh, this one liner here? Um, we're going to introduce a new method on piece, and this method is going to be abstract. It's going to be public abstract piece move piece. So it's going to take in a move and apply it to the existing piece that we're on and return a new piece given that piece is immutable. It's going to return a new piece that is a um, just like the old piece with an updated piece position. Okay. So again, remember we're sort of trying to mm, <clears throat> follow the examples from Joshua Block's Effective Java, and that's why we want to keep things immutable. In case you're wondering why we're going sort of through the effort of doing this, and it really helps, in especially in the future when we're going to uh, look at caching values and um, parallelizing our workloads. So right now it seems like we're incurring sort of a a penalty but that's not going to be the case forever uh, so here now we've introduced this abstract method that's going to break everything in here so let's go ahead and implement the method here on the let's start with the bishop okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say return new bishop and let's look at what bishop. Bishop takes an alliance and a piece position, right? So the alliance is move dot get. Oh, we didn't expose that, did we? So let's go in and expose that. Let's go back to move here. And inside of move, we need to expose a getter method for the moved piece. So let's say public piece get moved piece return this stuff move piece okay great so now we can come back here and say move dot get move piece dot get alliance oops and move dot get destination coordinate right so that's basically going to create a new bishop 
that is just like the current bishop but in the new location. I'm going to show you an optimization that we're going to do in a subsequent video where we don't actually have to do a new. We can pre-compute all of the possible bishops, right? So we can say, Im there, imagine a hypothetical empty board and what we do is we place a bishop let's say it's a white bishop and we p place the bishop on square zero and then square one and then square two all the way down to square 63 okay and then we put that in a table to look up and we also do that for black bishops right uh, and we can do that for every piece and when you calculate it out there are so there's six unique pieces for each alliance that means there's 12 unique pieces for the board and if you work it out do the math out there's seven there's 12 times 64, which is 768 uh, pre-computed pieces that we could, um, well, 768 pieces that we can pre-compute and uh, put in a lookup table for use later. I won't do that right now. Um, you know, I'm just going to sort of do it like this because we're not re really worried about performance right now. We're more worried about correctness. So let's just copy this whole implementation for each piece. And new king. New knight. New pawn. And we'll have to revisit this, but for now, I think this, this gets the point across here is in, ter in terms of what we've done. New queen. Oh, did I get that right? Hee <laughs> hee, new queen. And new rook. And in fact, for each of these, we can even be a little bit more specific in the override. In the override for moved piece here on bishop, I can actually say return a bishop. That's perfectly legal. Let's go through through each of these and do that. New king, knight, pawn. Queen and Rook. Okay, so I think we see what we've done here. We've introduced <clears throat> a new method called move piece, and we are using the move piece method. Oh, I haven't actually used it, so let's come back to execute. And in execute inside of execute, we're going to say builder.set piece. And we're going to, let's see, how do we want to do this? We want to <clears throat> actually, we want to say this dot moved piece dot move piece. This. We're on the, right? So we're on the move. We move the piece. Um, yeah, and we pass in the move. We pass in the move, all of the move information into the move piece method. Okay. Um, so right. So I'm going to stop here, uh, and in the next video we will take care of the hash code and equals method uh, on piece and do a little bit more cleanup. Thanks.